What's up and welcome everyone to a new video here on the official Entity Arena YouTube channel. My name is Eshazel and in this video, we are descending our way to the top in this Golgari Descent deck for standard best of one. All right, so this deck centers around the Descent mechanic, which is putting a permanent card in the graveyard from anywhere. Now, this deck consists out of two types of cards. We have our Descent payoff cards like Stalactite Stalker and our Descent enablers like Teachings of the Kirin. So let's have a look at our Descent payoff first. Now, I've already mentioned the card, but we have Stalactite Stalker up first, which is a new one mana, one one creature with menace from Ixalan that gets a 1-1 one -one counter on our end step if we've descended that turn, but also has a sweet activated ability for 3 mana where we can sacrifice the creature and give another creature minus X minus X based on its power. Now, at first glance, this creature might not look like much, but this little guy is quite powerful, especially in the right deck. Up next for our payoff cards, we have Souls of the Lost, a 2-mana creature that has power and toughness equal to the number of permanents in our graveyard, and when casting it, we have to either discard a card or sacrifice a permanent, which will trigger the send. Now, we're also playing Urborg Lurgoif, a 2-mana creature that we can kick, and if we do so upon entering the battlefield, it will mill 3 cards for each time it was kicked. And just like Souls of the Lost, the Lurgoif gets its power and toughness from the graveyard, but checks for creature cards instead rather than permanents. Now, you could play something like Cruel Somnophage 2 if you wanted to, but I like the Lurgorf better because it also gives us a way to trigger the send without having to play blue. Okay, so listen, listen, listen. Yes, I am playing Corpses of the Lost. <laughs> Is it the best card in the history of Magic the Gathering? No. Is it one of the coolest cards in the history of Magic the Gathering? Absolutely. Corpses of the Lost, upon entering the battlefield, creates a skeleton token and gives all skeletons plus one plus zero and haste. If we've descended on our turn, we can then put it back into our hand if we pay one life. So in an ideal world, we can just keep putting out a lot of skeleton tokens on the board with this one. And you know what? I am a believer. But yeah, in case you are not, you could play something like Tenacious Underdog in this spot as well, but boring. <laughs> okay, so now for the cards that will mill ourselves and trigger the send, we have Death Bonnet Sprout, a one mana creature that mills a card at the beginning of our upkeep and can eventually transform into a 3-3 that grows every upkeep if we have three or more creature cards in the graveyard. Teachings of the Kirin is a 2-mana saga that mills 3 cards and creates a 1-1 on its first chapter. And then when it eventually transforms on chapter 3, you get Kirin Touch Orochi that benefits from having cards in the graveyard. So that is just neat and is a ton of value in a 2-mana enchantment. Now up next, we have one of my favorite Planeswalkers of all time, Tyvar Jubilant Brawler, who not only mills for 3 to activate the send, but can also bring back one of our valuable payoff cards with mana value 2 or less. And then we have the Blossoming Turtus, who mills 3 upon entering the battlefield or attacking, and brings back a land card from the graveyard. Now on top of that, our man lands cost 1 less to activate and get plus 1 plus 1, so not only are we playing the Restless Cottage in this deck, but we're also playing Mishra's Foundry to synergize with the turtle. And now... No Golgari deck is complete without having Glissa Sunslayer and the Mosswood Dread Knight in there, because both cards just represent so much value. Despite not having any Descent synergy, we are still playing them in this deck. And then the removal of choice is two copies of Cut Down and three copies of Bitter Triumph. Uh, and Bitter Triumph is especially nice because it can also enable the send if we need it to, if we choose to discard a card rather than pay the three life. Now this deck is so cool and one of the best ways to play with the Descent mechanic in Standard in my opinion. Take it for me, like I've tried Golgari, I've tried Dimir, but something about having green and having all those really good self-mill cards just pushes the deck over the top and exactly where it needs to be. Now before we get into the gameplay, don't forget to like and subscribe to the official MDG Arena YouTube channel. And if you enjoy what you're seeing so far, you can also check out some more of my own content over on my own channel. All right, shout out to Wizards of the Ghost for allowing me to make another video for you guys. And without further ado, let's descend our way to the top. All right, we love being on the play. Uh, we have the Stalker, we have a Lurgoyf, Bitter Triumphs, we have some interaction. This is a good hand, I like it. All right, let's uh, just start off with the Takanuma instead of hurting ourselves with this uh, Lenoir ways. Ooh, Mountain, gotta be a red aggro. Okay, we can afford to play the Lenoir Waste now because you have the Death Cap Glaze, so we can still curve. Okay. Let's see what they play. Hopefully, it's something that we can hit with Cutdown. That would be nice. It's the Bloodthirsty, so not in Cutdown range, but um, the Kumano will be, so. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to take it out, and I think I have to pay the 3 life. I mean, I could also discard the Restless Cottage. But 
No, I still need to rest this cottage. It also gives us, like, you know, food eventually, so... I can do teachings of the cure in here and hold up cut down. I quite like that. Put another blocker in play. All right, a lot of land's gone there. So we're gonna swing in with Stalker. We're gonna descend. Let's get that, or we have to send it. So let's get that counter on it. Mano. We're gonna cut that down. Ooh, that's a Godric. All right. Well, Godric will eventually get into a uh, Selected Stalker range, so we could sacrifice a Stalker to get rid of Godric if we need to. Godric bullies us a little bit too much. Right, aggro, go face. Let's put it on the Stalker. Like, I kind of want to be greedy and, like, still Lurgoyf, you know? I think I will. I'm greedy. Let's kick it. Trigger to send again. This gets out of like lightning strike range. I hold back with this 1 1. I might want to chump with it. So that's a 4 4 now. I feel like Godric might go into the air though. The Zorkoif is kind of like whiffing for us a little bit. <laughs> I used to play um, old stick fingers in a spot because stick fingers would at least always mill like a creature and grow in power, but. Sometimes Zorgoy feels better, other times, you know. Sometimes Zorgoy is the better card, other times it's the uh, it's stick fingers. Zorgoy has kind of like let me down tonight. It's okay though. You can be like flexible with that is what I'm trying to trying to say. All right, Godric is gonna half our life total. Ooh, at least the Stalker can come in clutch and like remove Godric. Try to not get, you know, bullied <laughs> by the red aggro gamers. Yep, there it goes. Are we going to see a buff too? No, okay. But I still have something. I wonder what it is. I wonder what it is. So I definitely have to hold up the static that stalker here. Unfortunately, it is true. So there is still a pause. This might be like... Play with fire? Monstrous rage? I don't know... Uh, what's happening here. Anyways, the stalker is going to remove Godric, so we might as well swing with it. I'll also swing it with this 1-1. One, one. And once we put the stalker into the grave, the lure goif becomes a 3-4. So that's also pretty neat. Makes it a much better blocker. Yeah, I'm feeling like that's a play with fire. But, um, yeah, I gotta respect the Godric, right? Play with fire to the face! Classic red aggro style. Mm -mm -mm. All right. They're scrying to the bottom. Close game. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, I have to lose my most powerful creature soon, but, uh... Bloodthirsty swing or Bloodthirsty's gonna swing in. Put another permanent down for Godric? No. Let's see what we're attacking with. The team. And Monstrous Rage. Actually is. So what we can do then is we can do this. Deny that and then double block Godric because of the their timing. We are allowed to do so now. All right. Alive at three, <laughs> but it's OK. We have a Basaju here so we can swing in with the cottage, gain a life and clutch it. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. We take those. Okay. So it's kind of a shame we have this tablet here, but there's a lot of power in his hands. So we're going to keep that. Also like having to cut down, a little bit of interaction, you know. Also believer of land at the top <laughs> for my, uh, my stalker. Um, I might actually just start off with static that stalker here, to be fair. 
give myself the upside of potentially hitting an untapped land off the top. And if not, I can probably find a target for this cut down. Unless we're playing against control. But I'm assuming it's gonna be like soldiers, maybe, or um Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe it is control. I have no idea. <laughs> I'll put this stalker on play on the board though. Like at least it starts it starts swinging in a little bit faster. Oh, it might actually be maybe esper mid i have no idea now hmm anyways we got blessed by the untapped land of the top and uh let's see if we can fire off teachings of the kirin so we can start descending and put some moment counters on the satellite stalker but i would not be surprised if they eat this like eats up a counter spell but it does not so okay so we milled three permanents actually so uh that is a one one counter on our little stalker that could the little guy Okay, yeah, this might just be like regular Esper mid range. Ruffine! Oh wow, okay. Wee wee <laughs> wee 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 Ruffine swatted. Oh boy. Put a 1 1 counter on a creature. Um, it's gonna go to the Stalker. So, yep, Ruffine is a card that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> Sent tweet i guess um yeah i do need to remove this i'm just gonna take it now so my stalker can uh, safely attack here we go let's pay the one and um that's swing in oof okay i don't usually see like a permit range and like best of one that much it's like such a good best of three deck like you know? Mm. I'm honestly considering chomping. To not like fall too far behind in the race. Ooh, that seems a lot like a wandering emperor. Alright, let's swing in with the stalker here. Let's see what happens. There she goes! They even have the sleeves! Sheesh! <laughs> Summoned! Uh, alright, alright, alright. So I could take out the knight here, which kind of... See, like, I don't hate it. You deny them the life gain, you'd remove their only creature. The only downside is we're not really doing, doing anything for the board. But I'm really not against it. I'm gonna try this. I'm really not against it. We just gotta like kind of like keep them with their creatures for a bit till we like, you know, have our own board going for us. Is this like a super early? Nope, Rafine first. Oh, that Beseju could be very important, but we have to make like an important decision here soon. So first of all, let's be greedy and try to remove Rafine here. That's step one. I'm not playing around make the spear because I kind of want to keep this Beseju. Because there might be like a virtue. I mean, then again, Galissa also deals with it though. So, hmm. so Kieran Tachirochi says, blah, 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 exile target, non creature card. When you do put a woman counter on target creature. So we're going to have to buff the Kirin up this way to take out the Wandering Emperor. And that's what we'll do. So let's exile target non-creature card. Just making sure everything goes right. Target our own cut down and give this two. Oh, give this a woman counter. Put it at the two. It could eat removal though. But that also would not be the end of the world. Okay. So, yep, I actually think I'm going to have to play Beseju out and I'm going to put Souls of the Lost in play. We're going to sacrifice a permanent. Yes, I know it's scary, but we're going to do that. And we're going to just get rid of the Beseju. Yes, the Beseju. Or actually, maybe just the Swamp here. All right, six, seven Souls of the Lost. That's good, though. That's good still worried about the one ring emperor slightly but i think they probably are gonna like put this virtue on the board soon 
Yep, there it goes. Okay, hmm. So we have a forest here. I'm actually considering... Like, I could do... Oh, this is tough. So we could do Mishra's Foundry towards the Wandering Emperor as well. And play Glissa, but then obviously... They would just block that, so that's not really where we want to be at. It could also just be Restless Cottage. It might just have to be Restless Cottage towards the Wandering Emperor instead. So this here, Souls to the Face. Um, we'll just exile Rafine. Try to take out the Wandering Emperor and deal six. I still have much. To okay. This virtue is scary, though, like scary stuff. But we do have a really big six, seven creatures. So that's good, too. Got to hope for the best here, you know? I got hit with three, hit for three here. Galissa also a good blocker with the death touch and first strike. Imp almost impossible to r get rid of Galissa in combat, you know? Good play, good play. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a swing with the Souls of the Lost here. They might throw the boat in front of it. I think. Which would be a good sign, means they don't have any removal if they're like starting to throw away resources. There goes the Souls. Okay, so then I'm going to put in play Glissa. I can then hold up with Mishra's Foundry in case the card gets removed or like they find a way to deal more damage. I also still have food token that I can eat, which is nice. Let's see, let's see. Takanuma. All right, all right, all right. That is a really good sign, gamers. They bring back the Spyglass Siren, which I could have exiled, but I didn't. Okay. Still looking good, though. Oh, yep, yep. That pain lens, what's going to take him out? <laughs> oh, man. Good for us. Really bad for them. Because they, I think they would have, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess there's no other way around it, right? Maybe like tapping more strategically when doing the Takanuma. But um, yeah, all we got to do is swing in with the cottage, win the game. Here we go. We could even, uh, no, we could not do that. We could not swing in with another. But yeah, this is just a trick. So we take another one, gamers. Let's go. All right. Um, you know what? We don't really have like a lot of payoff, but we have a lot of interaction and like teaching of the Garen is super good. So we're gonna keep this. Also, yeah, I'm pretty high on the ladder right now. Um, I was playing my Simic Artifact deck, which I've also done a deck deck of on the, the channel. So check that one out. If you wanna figure out the secret code or ranking up. Deck is so good. The deck is so good, but you know, we're gonna win with some Golgari as well, you know? Evolved Sleeper. Are we up against Mono Black? That'd be pretty cool. All right. Fortunately, we drew a Mishra's Foundry here, but we're going to put Teachings of the Kirin in play first to try and um, get our value as fast as we can. Unfortunately, Mill 2 of our, like, you know, good creatures, but that's all right. Yeah, we're not going to block that because the Evolved Sleeper is just going to, like, buff up to a 2 2, so let's not bother. Um, we will most likely have to hit the Evolved Sleeper with a cut down before it grows to, like, as a 3 3 because then it gets out of cut down range. So we're probably going to do that next turn, despite what we draw. Like, I could also slam a Glissa, but, you know. All right, cut down so we don't get any Chapter 2 value, but that's all right. Um, so yeah, we can just put Mishra's Foundry in play. We're going to play new Teachings of the Kyrian, and we're going to take out the Wolf Seeper right now before um, they can put it out of range. Because if you wait on their turn and they buff it up in response to cut down, it fizzles. So you have to take it out now. There we go. Perfect. We still have the bitter triumph for the inevitable Shouldred at some point in time. <laughs> Not to manifest her into existence, but you know. Life of Toshiro. Interesting. Haven't seen that card in a while. Such a good uh, saga as well. So many, like, this is basically the battle of um, 
<laughs> the Battle of Kamigawa. Such good enchantments out of that, like, out of that set, truly. One of the strongest sets in standard at the moment, in my opinion. Okay, so part of me is really tempted to just put Glissa in play here because, you know, Glissa is so good and can also deal with the life of Toshiro. Unfortunately, Kirin is going to also go. So this is really unfortunate. Like, life of Toshiro is kind of hard countering these teachings. Um, but, I mean, the greedy part of me just wants to put Kalissa on the board. And you know what? I'm going to give in to it. So let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Now, maximizing out, like, your mana and, like, playing the turtle also isn't bad. Because, like, turtle will most likely also give us a land. And, like, you know, um, we could have, like, five mana. Like, we're not missing our land drops at that point. But, like, Kalissa. All right. Well... Um, <laughs> can't have anything, guys. It is what it is. It is what it is. Everything removed, everything answered. It'd be that way sometimes. So we have another Mistress Foundry here. I'll probably go for that. A little greedy, but, um, you know, we have that Blossoming Turtle synergy here. So we're gonna go for it. All right. Have any more removal on two mana, bestie? <laughs> or is the turtle gonna survive? No, oh, there's more. Another cut down. All right. Sure, sure, sure. You know what? It is what it is. We have some stuff left. We have our manlands and a dream. We also still have two bitter triumphs, which is really good. So I like that too. Um, I mean, I think I can afford to still uh, use my life total to my advantage. I am going to take out the memory of Toshiro because it does kind of ramp them up. I mean, we want to take advantage of them being stuck on two lands. <laughs> They've had all the removal in their deck with no lands, so that's good. Um, so yeah, these activate for one each now. So we can do swing in with both of them, which is awesome. This is why the turtle is so sweet. And also why we're playing the Mishra's Foundries. So let's hit for nine. Every time one of my payoff cards gets milled, like... I get a little sad. <laughs> I get a little sad. Like, Tyvar, we need you. Let's bring these cards back. Let's bring these cards back, Tyvar. Edicts, all right. The removal can't stop, won't stop. It is what it is, truly. All righty. So uh, I guess we'll swing in with the Restless Cottage. Um... I could also like swing in with a Mishra's Foundry, but like that would be a trade. At the same time, you really want to trade your Revolt Seeper away? Like, I would like to see that. I think I would be so down to trade. Then I don't have to waste my removal on it when this thing grows and eventually gets like Death Touch and stuff. Ooh, yeah, I'll just get rid of their Sleeper there. Here we go. We're not really giving Golgari Descent right now. We're more giving like Golgari Lands. <laughs> but that's fine. You do whatever works, you know? All right, the comeback of the turtle. Hmm. Opponent's probably like holding up removal again at this point, huh? I'll just start with turtle here and then we can swing in with a 3-3 foundry. We can also bring back our other foundry, which is sweet. I promise we're like a Golgari descend deck, not like a Golgari um, land reanimator. <laughs> It's okay, though. It's okay. It's okay. Let's do this. Foundry swings for probably two. I feel like this turtle is uh, not going to be very safe right now. Yep, there he goes. Bye, turtle. You did good things for us, though, when we appreciate it. We're up against, like, this is not even, like, mid-range. This is just control, really. Yeah. <laughs> Just how many removal spells? One, two, three, four. This technically removed two creatures. Six, seven. <sighs> anyway, we're thriving still. We're surviving. But shush, you know? All right, is this shoulder time or uh, we're holding up more removal? It is shoulder time. All right. Well, fortunately, we have an answer for that. So bye, shoulder red. Bye. Straw card. I like that stalker. Interesting. I quite like that. Um, okay, Lance, what are we doing here? Not the right thing. I can tell you that much. <laughs> uh, not the right thing. So let's make sure that we just like tap this manually. 
red and we or red we need a green and a black here we can then activate this while holding up the death cap glade for the Salakai stalker let's exile that shouldered there we go no reanimator stuff let's put the Salakai stalker in play slowly but surely grinding our way out of this game through infinite removal very standard very very standard coded uh, the opponent stack and then our life with the shiro all right well you're gonna kind of need to gain a life though but all right i haven't said a word i guess they got more removal i have no idea i don't think so i mean the odds like <laughs> the odds of that my friends like should not be very high here i go we got the good game too i'm assuming that's just like an honorable good game not a bm i have another answer good game all right there we go there we go we survived thanks to our man lands all right we love being on the play Ooh, don't we love this hand though so we got a bit of triumph we might have a glissa we might have a tyvar some turtles in the future it... <laughs> hmm if we hit a land and tyvar actually hits one of our descent creatures we're kind of good I might try it. I'm not the happiest with it, though. It's very close to being a mole. Very close. But if I mold a six and, like, we take away, like, one card, would I keep it? Yeah, I would. I would still keep the six over going to five, so... We're gonna do it! Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do it. That's our dominance by starting off with a forest. Oh! Two forest enjoyers facing off exali's lore keeper well that can only mean one thing huh dinos Ooh, this is a tap land too that's kind of unfortunate i do want to like stop the ram because there are very scary dinosaurs in the future potentially but i gotta be brave i, I gotta be brave glissa also the dinosaur slayer so Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Bramble familiar? Let him cook? What's going on over here? <laughs> okay, so we're seeing some ramp, but this is only... For dinos? No, there are dinos. Okay, no, no, there are dinosaurs. Yep. Oh, that's a super, like, what is that? A turn three Plony Hatcher? <laughs> uh, getting a little scared here. Getting a little spooked, I'm afraid. Uh-huh. Ooh. I think we might get punished for this hand, gamers. <laughs> but also, like, that was super fast ramping. Like, whoa, you know? I mean, Glissa is still defending. So, yay. Uh, I do want to get rid of the Plani Hatcher because it gives, like, all dinos haze. So let's not bother with that. Hopefully they don't have more, like... We need them to chill for a second so we can try to, like, stabilize and, uh... Oh, okay. Well... No more dinosaurs, please. Just five lands in a hand. Thank you. Please. <laughs> you have to ask nicely. Is this like the six drop? What is it, dino? Hopefully not. Uh -huh. Something like um that one mana removal spell. Oh, it's, it's the trumpeting carnosaur to get rid of Glissa. Makes sense. They could have played it too, though. Like, they could have actually just cast the card, but they're like, they respect Glissa so much, as they should. They just decide to, like, remove Glissa instead. Valid. Valid. Alright, let's put a turtle in play. We cannot miss these land drops. Update, we missed these land drops. <laughs> it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Oof. All right. Well, unfortunately, things did not work out for us here. You know, there's not much else to say. That was, uh, that was rough. I don't think you ever recover from this position. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't think that happens. Um, hmm. All right, Tyvar minus, perhaps mill one of our 
payoff cards like souls of the lost oh there's souls of the lost in there okay also play select that stalker okay so we have a big six seven creature now hmm okay <laughs> you know what we tried <laughs> whoa they get my corpses that's pretty funny actually that's an Atali. Oh my goodness. Yeah, opponent has a curve that is powerful. That is my... Those are my two cents on this game. Powerful curve, big stompy creatures. Too fast. Two rampers. I couldn't deal with them. I had no cut down, so they were just sort of free to like ramp into the into the heavens. That's a yikes for me, chief. That thing's got like haste too, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to take the L, you know? We're gonna, like, sunbathe Karn our way out of this one. It is what it is. I don't think uh, many decks could have survived that one. 